This fossil is around 750,000 years old and is from a mammal, most likely a bison. It was found in Haysbra on the coast outside of Norwich in the UK. Now this is awesome, but I thought it would be really interesting to make this old fossil into something new. So my buddy Patrick from Patrick Adair Designs makes amazing rings from all sorts of materials like meteorites, semiconductors, and of course, Lord of the Rings gold. So let's see what he can come up with. But we're not going to just send this to him in a boring box. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to try my hand at photogrammetry, which is the science of making measurements from photographs. Now traditionally, it's best to design a detailed part in CAD because you can control the exact dimensions you want. For instance, if I was going to design a cube, it's pretty straightforward in a program like Autodesk Fusion 360. However, natural items like this fossil are extremely difficult because there's all these irregular shapes and divots and odd structures. Now there are plenty of great scanners out there. They are also very expensive, like upwards of $10,000. And there's lots of really cheap scanners out there. And with those, you get what you pay for. For me, it's just led to frustration. But Prusa recommended a program called Meshroom, so let's give that a try. So now that we have our fossil all ready to go, um, I just put a screw inside some of this wood and we're going to hot glue it onto the head of the screw so that we're able to take a bunch of pictures all the way around the piece and get a real clear angle rather than taking a bunch of pictures of it just laying flat on the wood um, and not being able to capture the underside. First thing is to take pictures in high detail from all sorts of angles. Then I uploaded them and Meshroom spits out a massive file. I brought this into 3D Builder and cut away all the parts that we don't need. And surprisingly, we have a very high detailed object in a format that we can design around. You have to resize the object to the dimensions because it doesn't know the size. To make a case, I'm increasing the fossil to 2 millimeters more and then subtracting it from the cube. That way there will be just a little bit of wiggle room. I'm also adding cylinders for magnets. I gave it a test print before on a different machine and I noticed that when I used the Prusa slicer that it repaired a lot of the problems that weren't visible in other slicing programs. For instance, there's a skipped layer on this part. It's really hard to see, but it's in between these lines. And also the top of it had a whole bunch of uneven planes where it thought it was on different Z heights. But happily, the Prusa slicer fixes all these issues without you having to do anything. So let's add all the magnets to this and see how it works. Alright, so we have our two parts, and look at this fit. It's perfect. It doesn't need anything to, uh, to like keep it in place. It's like no shakes, no rattles, nothing. I love it. Is it over-engineered? Probably. Did we learn some things? Yes. So that's a win in my book. And since Patrick's gonna make a ring out of this, I printed the exact replica in this nice silver. Uh, so it's a cool model of the exact thing, and he could put that in the case and show that uh, it was about this big when he makes the ring out of this piece. All right, now let's send this over to Patrick and see what he does with it on his channel. In the meantime, I've got plenty more cool 3D printing projects right over here, so I'll see you on those videos. All right, so now we have our print, and all we need to do is remove the support material underneath. 